Welcome to the IIBA Tampa Bay, Florida chapter. This is our study group for October 10th, 2024. This is our 139th study group. Tonight, Promise is bringing us the great presentation, Exploring Salesforce as a Business Analyst. My name is Thea Soren. I am the president of the IIBA Tampa Bay chapter. I'm also the vice president of career and professional development. What that means is I'm here to help you. Whatever you need, reach out to me. The best way to do that is through LinkedIn. Uh, something else about me is I'm one of the founders of the BA Force Multiplier Movement. I'm one of the authors of the Business Analysis Body of Knowledge Version 3. I'm one of the authors of the Business Analysis Bridging the Gap Between Industries. So I am interested in quite a number of things. If you have something that you want to see if I'm interested in, reach out. We'll see what we can do together. We like to celebrate our wins. If you will look at our list here, these are the people that have reached out to say that our study group has helped them, benefited them in achieving their certifications. Uh, those that are in red have gone on to be leadership in other IBA chapters. Those that are in green have been or are currently leadership in our own chapter. And the person at the bottom, Promise, is our presenter tonight. So I'm especially excited about that. Our board members are actively working to be, bring benefit to you. We have a couple of new board members. You'll notice Olga has joined us and Dr. Joyce has joined us. We're looking for two more board members, board members at large that would like to participate in our organization. Uh, we won't ask you to do more than you wanna do. This is if you wanna help our benefit our organization, our, our community worldwide, uh, just reach out to me. We have board members and members from all over the world. Uh, Rejoice is our first board member from Canada, and I'm looking for a couple more. I'm also looking for some members. If you know Florida, you know that we've recently encountered the hurricane, but we persevere. We're going to continue to go on. If you do not have a IBA chapter, Tampa Bay may be your chapter. Uh, reach out to me. I want to be sure you get the best chapter for your purposes and your needs, but I'm happy to have that conversation. We have given you several ways to reach out to us. Uh, the IBA study group, the Babock study group that we have every evening, uh, every Thursday evening from 7 to 8 p.m. Eastern is announced on our website. We have also have the LinkedIn group. We've just reached, uh, I think we've reached oh, a record number. I forgot the number. Um, we have our meeting recordings on YouTube, but this one right here I want you to see is Bob's Incredible Index. It's rpchurchill.com. If you look at the Tampa Bay heading at the top and go down to the bottom of that page, you're going to see all of our study groups, all of our recordings, and Bob has created it so well so that there is a um, link directly into the YouTube so that you can find the topic and just go there. Uh, we have everything listed on our chapter website if you have any questions. We also have a Google Drive that has study material if you're interested in access. Our study group advisors, Bob Churchill and Esther, are wonderful. I want to give a big shout out to Bob Churchill. He has not only been, they both been nominated as volunteers uh, for our uh, region, and that is wonderful, but Bob has come up as a as finalist. He's one of the three finalists for our region, so that's an extra round of applause. We are looking for people who want to get together in person in Florida. We're going to create branches of our chapter around Florida. Uh, if you were in the Orlando chapter and you still want to get together, we're going to create a branch in Orlando. I need you to reach out to me. We have a director of emerging professionals. These are for college students. Wouldn't it be cool if whenever your child, your son, daughter, nephew, niece graduated college, they were also able to go into their first job interview to say, I am a member of a professional organization. I already have a professional certification. That's going to put them head and shoulders above every other applicant that's coming straight out of college. Reach out to our director of emerging professionals or reach out to me. We are associating, we are partnering with other associations. Uh, the Tampa Bay Women in Agile and the Tampa Bay Product Group joined us last week for a fantastic Lean Coffee on Agile. We also are partnering with several other IBA chapters, and we're looking for a couple of other organizations that want to get together with us to create good. 
Watermark Learning is one of our vendors that we've partnered with as well. They've given us a discount code of TAMPA21, which will give you 40% off of any of their products, including their flashcards and uh, courses. They have products in business analysis, project management, and a couple of other fields. Adaptive US specializes only in business analysis. They've also given us a discount code of 20% of all of their live classes and on-demand courses, excluding the IBA exam vouchers, but it is 20% off, so it's better than it was before. Uh, the, uh, the IBA certifications that we support are the three at the top, which are straight out of the business analysis body of knowledge, and the four at the bottom for Agile, uh, data analytics, cybersecurity, and product ownership. If you're interested in any of these, want more information, you can go to IIBA.org or you can contact me. So as I said last week, we talked to the Tampa Bay Women in Agile and Tampa Bay Product Group in Denarlene Coffee. Tonight, we're going to have Promise talking to us about Salesforce as a business analyst, and I'm honestly looking very forward to this. Uh, next week, David is going to come talk to us about influencing without authority because, you know, as business analysts, we don't often have authority, but we do need influence. And so he's going to talk to us about key strategies. The week after that, Tom Hendrickson is going to come talk to us about the care and feeding of developers, how business analysts can best work with our developers, what they need from us, what we need from them, and how we can move forward best together. Felicia Joyner is going to join us on October 31st and talk to us about her recent book and workshops. Uh, her book is called Techie Visions, Crafting Your Future in the Digital World. And then Pam Patterson. I've seen Pam giving this talk at other places and I'm really excited to hear this. Pam's going to talk to us about how to control your stakeholders so that they talk whenever they need to and they don't talk whenever you don't need them to. I'm excited for that one. The last meeting of the year is going to be our annual general meeting. This is the meeting where we talk about what we've accomplished this year, what our budget is, and what we're going to be planning for next year. And in that planning, we want to know what you want. So we would really like your, your attendance and participation. Now I'm going to turn the meeting over to Promise. We're going to ask that you save your questions until the end. If you want to put them in the chat so we can find them at the end, that would be fine. But I'm going to let him have the screen. Thank you, Tia. I will share my screen in three, two, one. All right. Can we all see my screen? Yes, we can. Thank you. All right. Thank you so much. It's such a wonderful experience and an honor to be in our midst today. I will be talking about exploring Salesforce as a business analyst. And I have a bit of quiz for us to do in between the session. So I would ask us to please join in by scanning the QR code so we could practice the quiz later on in the session when awesome. I go ahead. Yeah, so this is the QR code. So please just scan the QR code and I have a few questions waiting for us already to answer. Okay, thank you. Yes. So the simple one is about how we feel in today. And uh, I'm looking for our comments, Pifi. <laughs> <laughs> Lovely. David, we're seeing, we're seeing your PowerPoint. Do you want to show oh, well, that for the presentation? Yes, one moment. You can do either way. We are not we're not picky. That's very impressive. So we have lovely, tired, wholesome, spiffy. Anyone else wants to give us a comment? I think that's the extent of our members. 
I was trying to well. put okay there, but it doesn't seem to accept that answer. <laughs> Maybe it wants you to use another word. <laughs> Maybe. Well, it's all right. I'm glad that we're excited about tonight's presentation. I'm sorry I had to use night. It's actually 12 a.m. from my end. I will go back to my slide now so we can get cracking on today's details. Can we see my slide now, please? We we can see the PowerPoint. Yes. All right. Great. So um, here's a bit of what I'm going to talk about today. Uh, we will do a background introduction of what Salesforce is about. Then I uh, will tell us the futures of all the products that it has. I would also tell us what we as business analyst professionals really do on the Salesforce platform. I would also tell us how do we get started as business analysts exploring Salesforce and um, how do we really learn the craft of really navigating Salesforce as business analysts as well, which is always the hard part. Then I have a bit of a quiz where we're going to test the knowledge of everything that we've actually learned during the session. And um, maybe Tia is probably going to give the award-winning winner for tonight a prize. That's not on me, but... <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, so that's basically what we're going to run through tonight. And um, it promises to be interesting. I have a demo session. If Tia gives me a few minutes, I could do a demo navigating the live platform for us so we could really have a feel of what the platform looks like depending on how much time we have left so yes um i already told you i don't really like talking about my profile so much and i'm not really a title person so i'll skip that because it's all over your face already by the way and we'll go straight to what the, the key details for today is about Yes, so what's the key detail for today? It is Salesforce. And Tia has already told me she's been hearing about Salesforce like a buzzword for like 15 years. And I suppose everyone as well has probably been hearing the same thing. And I'll break it down to one of the simplest things that we already know. Um, of course, everybody knows that it's a CRM, a customer relationship management platform. And it has a wide range of products. Like everybody knows that. Um, now, I'll give you a simple scenario. Let's say you are a client facing person and you have more like an ERP at the top of all your transactions that is cloud-based. It has access to managing your customers. It has access to having a marketing platform for your clients to also see. It also has a platform where you could link the finance team into it as well and it could all be all encompassing such that there is a awesome experience and it's saved on the cloud that is more like really helping businesses transform from a typical legacy system type of operations <laughs> to having a wonderful seamless experience that is how salesforce is built and we'll go into the details in the next slides now, I mentioned how we want to really explore the different areas that Salesforce has. Maybe I should put this on presentation mode. I don't know if this is okay. Yeah. So, put this in presentation mode. Now, look at the core products that Salesforce has. These are just few of the products. There are many products that it has. So it has marketing cloud, sales cloud, service cloud, everything all based on the cloud. So you don't have to work on on-premises type of server related, related kind of um, system when you're managing Salesforce. When the implementation process is done, everything goes to the cloud. And we're talking about a very secured platform here. So these are just few and the most popular type of product that you would get when you get into the system as a business. Uh, depending on the kind of business operations you offer, that depends on the kind of cloud solution you'd want your business to have. So take, for instance, when you're talking about sales cloud, it basically all talks about management of sales processes. You'd find that typically for organizations that probably 
work on more of sales related products and sort of management. You'd also find that when you have a customer experience team that deal with a number of your clientele when you're making sales or maybe have an opportunity to really put you, convert the opportunity to a lead, Sales Cloud is that platform to help you manage it within the Salesforce ecosystem. Um, then we have Service Cloud, which is a customer service kind of platform. You have the customer has raised a complaint. How do we really escalate that complaint such that one member of the customer management team treats that complaint and understands that this complaint is actually time-based and has to be resolved under a very short minimum time. You want to implement Service Cloud. Marketing Cloud on the other end, it's about really putting a lot of marketing contact engagement when it comes to campaigns, right? You want to really see how your campaigns are really going. What tractions does your campaign have? Then look at Commerce Cloud on the other end. It's basically end-to-end -end business when it comes to e-commerce related transactions. On the other end, we have Experience Cloud, which talks about a wholesome experience that has different types of engagement where people can put in a whole lot of advertisements about the different products and services they are offering within the ecosystem and it's still going to work. Then infusing data into it to show how analytics is. Salesforce has its own dashboard that shows you the progress of all the internal operations, the results that you're working on and how visually compelling they can be using data. Um, it also has the app exchange, a third party app that you can integrate with other platforms. You want to integrate Salesforce to Zoom. You want to integrate Salesforce to any of the in-house solutions that you have, any of the ERPs that you have in the office. You want to use the app exchange. So these are some of the basic details that you explore when it comes to product that Salesforce has. It has more than that, but this is a tip of the iceberg. Now, we as business analyst professionals, we are going to really work with business analyst related tasks, right? Um, but I would always tell some people, I would always tell people that um, before you want to implement a solution or recommend a solution as a business analyst professional, it is important to have an overview of what the solution can do, its limitations, its power, and at what point do you want to recommend it, depending on the clientele you're working on. Uh, so which is one of the reasons having an overview knowledge can help. Uh, we as business analysts can really benefit from the platform on two ways. We could be a specialist that focuses on business analysis and the, the, the entire ecosystem of Salesforce, or we are going to be business analysts that have knowledge on CROM implementation and process optimization using Salesforce, which is where I think it might be beneficial for us that are not really big on being specialists within the platforms. So what is there? It is still the same thing that we as business analysts do, be a bridge between the business needs and the tech itself. And of course, we're going to use the same task that we use in our typical business analysis activity, which are always going to be our soft skills as consultants, embodying, listening, presenting, facilitating, questioning, communicating, and managing people which are difficult stakeholders. I'm glad that I already have a speaker coming in in November to speak about how to really manage stakeholders because it's always going to be the case. And of course, you really want to be very analytical as well. What are technical skills you'd always do as business analysts, whether or not you're within the Salesforce ecosystem or outside of your work, you're definitely going to write requirements. You're going to do process map. You're going to do data modeling. You're going to write user stories and you also need the knowledge of the entire Salesforce architecture. And that is why you see people going further after having maybe like uh, a Salesforce associate certification like, um, like Ashia already had, if I pronounce her name correctly, <laughs> forgive me, please, already has. Uh, then you also find some people going ahead to have maybe that Salesforce admin because it gives them that right to knowledge, understanding how the Salesforce ecosystem really works, which is what they need to navigate 
the Salesforce ecosystem? Yeah, I promise. I have a question here. So I know Salesforce has two certificates. One is Salesforce Business Analyst and one is the Certified Administrator. But when I was trying to prepare for the examination, I was kind of confused. Is it the same role in different names or is it different role in different names? Because even like when I tried to go through LinkedIn job postings and things like they put like Salesforce administrator slash business analyst. So do you want me to be an administrator or a business analyst? So, you know, I, you got my question. I got your question. Thank, yeah. you. Uh, Thank you. I'll just keep it that for later. Okay. I hate I got it. Definitely. We'll take it first when it comes. So we don't spoil the flow. <laughs> All right. So um, how do we really get started? Um, I'll come back to your question when we are on question time, please. Thank you. So how do we really get started nav navigating the knowledge base of just even knowing what Salesforce is? Salesforce has made it really easy. Um, like Microsoft has Microsoft Learn to really learn about their products and how to work around it. If you want to go about implementing it, if you want to go about getting certified, Salesforce has Trailhead. And thanks that she had just already mentioned how the different certifications are a bit confusing for her to understand. We'll put that into context as we go ahead in the presentation. So in Trailhead, you onboard into the platform and you pick a learning path, which is called a trail mix. A trail mix is and an embodiment of all the learning resources you would need on a particular learning path. Uh, let's say you want to go through uh, the Salesforce business analyst learning path. There's a true mix of different classes, videos, steps with questions and answer practices that you're going to take that allows you to navigate that path. But however, we have the associate trail, which is a, certi which is a fundamental certification for you to even understand all the frames of what Salesforce is, it allows you to just navigate and have the basic understanding of all the key items you need to know without going in depth. And there are three different types of associate certifications currently going on. We have the certified associate that is basically just giving you that fundamental. Then we have the marketing associates. We also have the AI associates as well. And these are fundamentals within the different marketing space of what the ecosystem has. But for we as business analysts, um, we have the business analyst trail as well. It also has a certification, which is the certification that you see there as a certified business analyst professional. Um, other certifications that might come in handy aside the associate certification um, when you're learning Salesforce is usually going to be the admin certification. It's not put, it's not there yet because we as business analysts, we want to really see how we could really learn about it. Why people go through that part of being admin is because it allows them have depth knowledge of the platform. That's the, the you, you do not necessarily want to say you're going ahead to get certified business analysts. Um, it's a credential to you. But if you do the admin, it gives you that leverage to say, okay, because I'm already a business analyst professional, I might decide when I want to go for the certified business analysis professional, since you already have that knowledge of the depth itself. Um, these are third party application. This is Clicked, it's a third party website that offers you pathways, learning pathways, practices through challenges, through demo sessions that you can really get hands-on on Trailhead of, of all the things you do in Trailhead as a third party. Imagine when you are um, learning something and you want to really have like a practical simulation of what you've learned outside of Trailhead, which is the learning platform. Clicks.com is a third party page that gives people cases to work on it. Till Salesforce themselves have their own their own practices that you could do. But this is you going extra by going to click.com. The practices that Salesforce has for you to really get hands-on of different tasks or when you're working on a project. Take for instance, you're working on a CRM problem case that a customer raised. Um, 
it is called a super badge. So these are super badges, a combination of different tasks that you're going to do to have hands-on project. And it comes as a special recognition badge of its own. When you have it, it tends to give you some leverage that you understand how to perform some task as a Salesforce professional, depending on whichever part you choose. Uh, I will go ahead to the next slide now, where we will dive in. to a bit of practice. Uh, we'll do a bit of short demo now quickly uh, before we go ahead into questions. I won't go in depth depending on my time. So I wanna show us the Salesforce webpage and how to get hands-on on Trailhead, how to start the associate trail, which is one of the simplest trail you should know when you're starting off on Salesforce. So you don't really get bored doing the dirty stuff or getting the hard things done when you're working on the admin pathway. Like I said, for, for we has already experienced business analysis professionals. We may not need the business analysis trail for starters, but we need to at least understand the ecosystem. The associate trail and the admin trail is what we may just want to play around with to at least understand what Salesforce is, particularly the associate trail because it's simpler, easier, and gives you fundamental of what Salesforce is. And that would help you shape your idea of whether you want to go ahead on this thing, this learning journey, or you want to just sit back and mind your business as a business analyst. <laughs> uh, so I'll just open the web, um, the web page of the Salesforce ecosystem to so show us what it looks like. It's practically just their website. And the website is going to show all the different products that they have. I mentioned a few products and I mentioned the industry partners customers and when you click this part you're going straight into the learning platform which is called Trailhead and you can embed the company you're working on as well and this is the advert of all the different solutions that they have which is um, the introduction of Agent Fox. Yeah Tia I'm is that you? We're, yes we're still seeing your your uh, presentation we're not seeing in the website. Oh wow sorry um, it's let okay. me go sorry. ahead. I yeah. was talking to you on mute and thinking, I'm something's not right. <laughs> Thank you. It's all so right. This it's... is it. Yeah. So this is the web page. Okay. Sorry about right. that. So this is the Salesforce homepage. If you visit the website on Salesforce and it's putting a bit of, um, how do I put it? It's, it's selling me how telling me the number of badges that I already have on the Salesforce platform. But we'll come to that. So these are the product pages. And this is the industries that he has, um, the customers that we have, and the learning, the supports. I don't want to click any of that yet, so I don't bore you. I'll go in steps. Um, then this is a bit of Agent Fox, one of the recent products that they just launched to really bring in the revolution of AI that is becoming so much a thing. And it's like, if you run in a business and you don't have AI as part of your business, it's like you're going extinct. So... It's one of the newest things that you would learn as we go ahead. So this is a Salesforce website, and these are all that you'd see from starters. You could book a demo to know what their product offering is by clicking the chats bus of contact us, and you could decide what region you want to reach out to, and you could go to your own profile. I already have a profile and that's the reason you're finding this access here. Then I will go into a page called the developer page later on. The developer page is more like a practice page where Salesforce has created for you to work on any small tasks that you're learning on the Trailhead platform. So you could get to see how it's going to work in if you are in the back end. Uh, all right, is that fine? I'm not going to bore you so much. Please tell me how boring it is later on in the chat. <laughs> okay, um, let's go back to my slide now. So I want to go to Treehead. Uh, Tia, can you tell me what we can see at the moment, please? 
Currently, we can see your web page. Oh, we are okay. not the yeah. All right, so I'm going to see how I can share my entire screen so it allows me navigate easily. Zoom uh, seems to have an update recently that whenever you switch back and forth, it doesn't switch. So we we just no. may need to. We'll just help. How's that? I think we just keep going back and forth. I mean, it's okay, but then okay. sometimes you just you just want to just navigate quickly, and it's telling you to just slow down. So I'm coming back to my slide here, where I will take you to Treehead. I already embedded the links, and I'll show us how to go go about it from the main website ourselves. Like I mentioned, Salesforce has a learning platform called Treehead. And you could navigate that on the website using learning. However, the name of that page is called Treehead. I'm going to go to Treehead now to show us what Treehead looks like. Let me know when you can see my page of Treehead. We can now. It. Thank you. Yes, so if you're navigating from the website, all you need to do is click on learning and it will take you straight to Treehead. So Treehead is where you want to begin your journey. It's going to stimulate my own page so that we see how learning looks like. Now, uh, this is for every learning experience that you engage on, you then move up the badge. So it has different badges from start to whenever, and you get accumulated points for every learning point that you take, right? Now, this is the associate credential, and you can see it's called a trail mix. Now, this is the part that allows you to have the fundamental knowledge of trail of Salesforce. When you click it, when you click it, we're going to do this in private. If Tia gives us the time, I'd want us to just do it on our own quickly to just navigate. Now, when you click this trail mix, this is the exam itself. You're not going straight to the exam. You want to at least start learning what the ecosystem is about, what the outlooks, all the simple buttons, the quick outlooks are all about. So if I click on this, you'd see that a learning part is going to open up that tells you what exactly is the values and what the outlooks are. I've completed it, but I'm going to go back to open it. It tells you how long it's going to take. It's just something you'd want to read for five minutes. And this is it telling you that how Salesforce drive value in the platform change. This is customer experience, what their values are, what the business is, and asks you a few questions from all the things that you've done and you'd mark that, then you move on to the next one. It's gonna show the next one there and tells you the view nest models, right? That's how you keep going on and on and you get to the difficult parts where you'd have to do hands-on task from the learning parts that has been shared from you while you were taking the trail. So this is how you learn about Salesforce doing it learning it on the platform. So this is a one-in-one -one place. It can be boring, but it's engaging and it's very interesting. You just have to dedicate one hour, one hour daily, and you're moving the path. Before you know it, you're already done. This is how we, I got to um, the Ranger badge of 113, which is not even anything um, compared to what a lot of people that has been in the health system has really done. Now, before we go ahead to what the next area, I think I should just navigate the web page. Um, I did tell us about the different product areas, and this is a developer page. Now, this is Einstein, which is like a chat bot that you could use to really have a chat bot you could talk to, right? Yeah, yeah, on the same platform. Now, if I have like a multi-factor authentication savings. I've seen platforms. Have you seen platforms there where you want to log into any page and they tell you you're logging in through Salesforce? Has anyone seen anything like that? I've seen login where you have to use your, your single sign-on, but I've not seen Salesforce. 
Well, you could do that if you have your account with Salesforce. So you'd have Salesforce as the access page to the the customer has to do. So there's this guys that used to work with sometime. They practically just use Salesforce for the third party retailers that come into their store to log into their page. And this is what you could use that for. So you have the multi-factor authentication. These are simple things you could actually do it. You want to create, this is going to be all the different tools that you have. So you can see Slack. You can see all the simple pages. You could embed them into this platform. And yeah. this, is, this is how you could play around it. And this is where you would click all the different products that we mentioned earlier. So this is the marketing, the service cloud that we talked about. This is how it is. And if you've played around the platform, you would go to the object manager to really work it out a bit of how you want the platform to really look like in terms of editing a whole lot of details. Promise. And, uh, I just also wanted to add something. Sorry to cut you. If anybody's using Tableau, you yeah. we actually yes. make use of Salesforce to sign so, in. So. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. 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 It's kind of a hand in hand relationship. Exactly. That's true. Yes. Thank you, guys. At least I have I have neighbors that understand my language. <laughs> so that's these are these are a bit of how you could get into um, the developer page. So this is the page that you're going to use. You're going is going to the your learning pathway is going to allow you to have a developer page so you can play around all of these with the different tasks that you're going to work on. I'm not yet to start performing all those tasks for us right now, so I don't take the whole day. So what I want us to do is to get a bit of um, fundamental and say, okay, I introduce you to Salesforce, and, and I got you. <laughs> oh, sorry to interrupt, promise. But also, yes. Salesforce is giving free AI certifications. I'm not, I'm not done. I'm not done, Shakti. I trust me. I'm not done. I'll give you. I'll give you all that. <laughs> I promise. So let me go back to my slide. I promise I'll give you all that. Thank you so much. Um, when we come back to uh, my slide, and uh, like I said, so this is the business analysis trail. I can share us all the links as well. So I'm going to click that. So the link is live and we can all assess each of these trails whenever we are navigating the page. Uh, so this is the business analysis trail that allows us to show all the different areas. Now, um, Tia, you're my timekeeper. You know how long I have. If we have time, I would go ahead with this task. If we don't, I would skip it. Uh, it's a simple task where we could all just go on the Trailhead uh, page, sign up and create an account. And we don't have to actually start with the basic model now. But I just want us to at least sign up to know that we already signed up while on the call rather than waiting till whenever. Is that something you want us to do or we should just move to the next slide? We have over 20 minutes, so I'll let you decide. Okay, um, I would say we should skip that, then do that later during the question and answer time. Is that okay? Yes, all right, thank you. Um, Yes, so um, there's a freebie that we uh, actually, a freebie that is currently going on. Um, this certification that we have, Asha, Ashaya, yeah, Ashaya was, yes. was, was very, very early to let you guys know about it already. Um, so Salesforce is currently encouraging people to get on their platform to learn about AI, and they want you to learn how you could really embed AI into your learning journey about Salesforce. And they are giving you a free certification pathway to explore that with them. All you have to do is click the trail mix of the AI associate trail or, and the AI specialist trail. Some people have gone very passionate to learn about being a specialist on the AI for Salesforce itself or just being an associate that understands the fundamentals of these respectively. You don't want to fail any of the exam on your first try, so you want to take a few time, few, few, few more time to practice them, learn about it, and play around it as much as you can, right? 
And how you have to do is click the links that are here. I will be sharing this on the chat box when we move on to our question and answer area. So these certifications are free beginning from last month, September till December, 2025. But if you fill it once, you'd have to pay $50 for the AI associate and you'd have to pay $100 for the AI specialist because the, uh, the, we have to get a repeat voucher, which is one of the reasons we want you to take your time, learn it, take practice questions, and you can be certified as someone that has this fundamental knowledge about Salesforce. Uh, yeah, I yep. have a quick question here. So to be honest, since I'm kind of learning all the Salesforce certifications, so you won't believe me, whatever website I go, I'm just getting the Salesforce Einstein ad. It's like, oh, you can be a new Einstein, blah, blah, blah. So, you know, Einstein is the Salesforce AI's, I don't know, like model or something, right? But yes. is there a specific reason why they are giving free certifications for this prolonged period of time? Like, yes. like, what is the kick? Do they want to improve their AI section or they want people to, you know, start using more of Salesforce? So I'm just trying to see what's where. Yes, so I think two weeks ago, um, we had a community group here in Birmingham where we practically explored all these questions that you've just mentioned. Um, so what has happened is... There is the boss that we all we all know that there is an increasing boss of Salesforce really being in the market a whole lot, and because of Salesforce being in the market a whole lot, and different tech organizations are raising their own AI tool. Uh, we've seen um, Google release Gemini, we've seen um, Microsoft release Copilot. Um, Salesforce is making this publication and doing as much as going ahead to really teach you about how they're embedding AI into their own platform as well. So it's more like to do that, they have to just go ahead to make a noise about it, which is why you're seeing all this. Is that, is that good, Ashia? Yeah. All right, so that's, that's why, why you're seeing. So I think we should just follow along and enjoy the freebie at the moment. So I'll move on to the next part, which is the interesting part. I see I have a question from Ashia that I've not answered anyway. I'm coming back to it because she talked about the different certifications pathway and how demanding they can be, which I will address in my next slide. Uh, so this is a slide from Salesforce Ben, one of the popular third party resellers of so third party educators of the Salesforce ecosystem. Um, they've created this graphical representation of the different certifications and learning pathways that Salesforce gives. Salesforce has a lot of certifications, but see it as not being certifications, but see them as learning pathways of whatever typical tech role that you'd have and how you would navigate it very, very well. Um, you look you look at how we mentioned how the associate pathway is one of the introductory pathway for you to really navigate. And we now have the II associate pathways and the specialists that are also just close by. And the first thing is going about is telling you how to be the admin, right? The admin is the guy that really does the who does what and who does what right kind of rule, right? And that is why I would always say the admin is the fundamental pathway that really allows you to understand how the Salesforce ecosystem really work depth, in-depthly. Um, the associate is going to give you an overview. Then the admin is going to take you a lot deeper, allowing you to really choose whether you want to go wide, which whatever pathway you want to be. Um, people most likely do not bother getting the Salesforce business analyst certification themselves because they're already business analysts and they're practicing and they just want to learn about how Salesforce works. They go for the admin. Um, you'd find roles like a Tableau person. Uh, Esther mentioned how when you want to get on Tableau, you could use Salesforce to get onboarded. Um, you could even be a marketing person. You'd be a platform builder. Uh, 
typically the way it is. You could be an architect, a solution architect. Tip every single role you'd find on the typical ecosystem, you'd find it here on Salesforce as well. And imagine when you're working with a charity, um, you want to really implement a, sale, a, 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 a Salesforce ecosystem. They have a specific product for that, um, which is a not-for-profit cloud um, solution. And all of these could come in there. So there are different pathways to all you want to really learn. Um, but like I said, um, one of my mentors within the ecosystem would say, you, you, for starters, you don't need as much certification. But when you start learning, you realize that, well, I'd love to learn more. And before you know it, you keep going, you keep going. And that is why I mentioned a disclaimer about what path we want to go. Do you want to really be um, specialists within the Salesforce ecosystem? Or we as business analysts just want to learn about it just in case we have projects that link towards it, which is a good to know. Uh, that said, I will move on to my next uh, so, slide. Sorry, I have a quick question. Is this um, a recommended experience? Is this really a recommendation or it's uh, like a mandatory to have that, the experience? Um, I would say it is not a must, uh, but mm -hmm. if you're somebody that is very enthusiastic about learning, um, it's a good to have. Um, so it's time for us to quickly play our quiz and I want us to join in quickly. If you've not joined already, I know, I think I heard Esther's voice and uh, I heard someone else's voice as well that were I didn't hear earlier. So can you please sign up and we'd have a quick quiz, then we'd have the questions afterwards being answered. I'll most likely answer the questions in between the quiz. I think I'll just give one minute. I feel like a good number of us already joined. Okay, um, now that we already joined, let me quickly go live. So there's a quiz that's going to come up shortly. Let's enjoy it while it's, while it's last. Get ready on your skin. So we're ready, right? Yeah. Are we ready? I think so. All right. Let's go. Oh, Lord. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure, but... I mean, a good number of everyone had this one. 90% said three ahead. And yes, we're right. Want to see what the leaderboard says now? I think it's going to say the same thing for now. We just move on straight up. Really? OK. 
Okay. This one's a bit tricky. But of course, the majority carries the vote. Forget about the names. We'll see the true names later. I know it's a bit tricky because of the way the platforms are. But we mentioned clicks.com and we could get hands-on sprints and challenges. I know 29% of us missed that one. Okay. So it's it's develop developer accounts when you're already on Treehead. Because when you're already on Treehead, you want to get a developer account to practice what you what you do on Treehead. It's a bonus, actually. Ninety four percent choose the right answers. Most of the time, a number of people usually fail this one. It's always the same case. <sighs> only 20% got it right. It's always the same problem. So we talked about Super Badge being provided by Trailhead as a similar a similar system, the way Click is built. So you get to really work on hands-on projects um, where you'd get that recognized badge using this one. 
You're almost there. You're almost there. That's easy. One minute. We're all correct. Please ignore the names. You're still carrying old names from my previous task. Exactly. <laughs> it's not it's not actually A service cloud, we did talk about it earlier. Oh, guys, see you. You're smashing it big time. Finally, coming up, beating the old guys that were there. <laughs> Only 50% got it. I mentioned it earlier, though. Did I? I hope I did. Except I'll be a bad teacher. There's no way, no, no way anyone's going to fill this one. I want to assume the four percent is from 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 wherever. Somebody is d deliberately. <laughs> yeah, so that's here answers. on the board. Yes, she <laughs> has to be on that board. <laughs> yeah, you sounded like you didn't know it already. Come on, you're already there. <laughs> okay, so um, it's a close one. Olga only got 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 in by one point difference. Uh Pierre yeah, don't see don't see that Tia had it tied there, so it was a close one. I think it was just a thing of just the time. But Tia. Yeah. <laughs> uh well, well done everybody. Um I like the fact that we quickly catch up on the fundamentals of what the session is about. Um I want to quickly just wrap up. We're already behind time. I will just go back to my slide, then I will quickly wrap up and we move on to our hand over to Tia. Thank you all for engaging. So I'll just go back to my slide quickly and close. So um, these are going to be shared on the chat box. So these are continuous learning sources that I feel we could get 
So this is how you get on community groups. And these are some YouTube channels that you could also explore for your continuous personal de development. So usually within every city, there's a Salesforce community group. So all you have to do is just do a Google search of wherever city that you are, and you'd be able to find your nearby community to join. And they hold sessions the same way we're holding sessions as IRBA chapter members from time to time. So we keep, it stays abreast with everything that we need to learn about Salesforce from time to time. Uh, of course, these are some of the numbers within the Salesforce career opportunities that for those that are interested in, in looking at it. And uh, it's an average. These are stats from one of the sources that we found and some could be updated behind before further than what it what it is at the moment. And yes, thank you. Um, come to the close of my presentation, and I'm going to take questions. Yeah, I hand over the mic to you. Okay, promise that was fantastic. Yeah. Um, does anyone have any questions before we let Promise go? I have a question i don't know if it's quick or not it's so okay. i wanted okay. to, so i wanted to ask you um so uh, how actually uh, sales um, how sell, uh, salesforce as a solution um to which yes. extent it is customizable so in other words have you ever encountered such a situation when uh, you couldn't cover all the uh, customer needs uh, with the uh, with the with the functionalities uh, with the functionalities that Salesforce provides. So, and you had to like consider another solution instead. Uh, was there any um, situation like that? Hey, little man, <laughs> you had to come into the picture. <laughs> Well, thank you so much for the question, Olga. So yes, uh, they've as consultants, when we work in as consultant really within the Salesforce implementation ecosystem, they are going to be complex cases. But then as we as when we as business analysts really look at it, we do our options analysis and we really engage these customers to really know what the pain points are. Uh, it is during the case of the options analysis that we really get to put into context if the Salesforce ecosystem has the capability of handling that business problem. And if we do, which part of the cloud solutions fit best into that business problem? Uh, during that whole stage of that conversation is where we make a choice of, yes, we are a go-to brand that could actually solve that business problem or not. So it's not a one-off thing that you, your goal is going to go in. I've seen cases where organizations um, take, for instance, in not-for-profits, there's a charity that is very close here in the UK. Um, they have interest in really getting to Salesforce because of their growing need for it. However, because of being a charity, they can't afford the system. They'd have to go for a cheaper brand, which also does the same project that Salesforce would do to them. So there are always going to be cases, um, but may not have as much futures as Salesforce does, maybe not really having the cloud future and all in one solution. So the cases are always going to be different depending on the organization that we're dealing with. I don't know if that answers your question. Okay, so sometimes you, you just have to refuse um implementing a solution on Salesforce. Okay, thank you. Yes, exactly. It looks like Bob has a question. Yes, Bob. How much um, scripting, screen design, and customizability does the ecosystem have? Because if it has any or enough, then there is theoretically no problem you could not solve. So yes, uh, I think it's not really going to be about the problem we could not solve. It's going to be if our end users can afford it. 
Yeah, so it's a cost problem, right? So you can it's the cost like, customize, it's but it will be too customize. expensive. Exactly. Usually it's, it's a very common issue. Yes, it's a cost problem. It's not a customization issue. The team is, they have developers that are really on the ground to implement and customize every solution to suit every market or organization's need. The problem is, can they afford to go that length with the organization? It's not their fault as Salesforce consultants, but is the organization willing to invest um, on it? That's just it. Rhombus, do you find that Salesforce sometimes is customized to the point where they back themselves into a corner? Sometimes it's better not to customize so much. Trust me. Um, speaking <laughs> from the cost, speaking from the consultant perspective, I'm going to tell you for a fact that it's easier when the solution we really implement in a business is usually suitable to one of our off-the-shelf products directly. So it just mm -hmm. goes in straight. Um, when you're doing customization, you have to be really, really careful uh, because not all, um, not all of the platform's assets is customizable. So there are objects, there are standard objects, and there are some parts you can't really customize. It could be because there's going to be an add-in feature, but you being the business analyst and the consultant implementing this, it takes you longer time and also an extra cost, which the client may not really love. I understand. One yes. of the things that I think I remember about Salesforce is that there's a work management feature. So I receive something and Salesforce receives something and it sends it to the proper person based upon its yes. limit. And then that person has an approval process and it flows through so that we don't have to have people waiting to check queues. Salesforce kind of manages it for us. Is that correct? That is called the escalation rule. You okay. could do a, a little Google search on it and you see it's Salesforce escalation rule. Um, Tier is somewhere just having a nice time and um, Olga on the other end has a task and is like, this, tier is for, this, this task is for Tier. Put Tier on the list and go straight to Tier and Tier gets a beep that's on the laptop telling her, hey, you've got a task that has to be done. Uh, this is why I'm so time waiting on the log for you. That's what I love do. that. So I don't have to wait to hope that they look at their email or hope nah, that they get have something to. in Teams. It's right there. It's right there. Salesforce right creates in front of your dashboards. Face. Yes, it person, does. So that yes. you can have your own dashboard with your own information on it. That is exactly. so exciting. Exactly. So okay. It is interesting. Um, it's an interesting learning pathway. So, like I said, it's the ball. The ball just comes to us as professionals. Do we really want to go in as specifically under the ecosystem alone, mm -hmm. or do we really want to look at it from the perspective of I'm a business analyst. I know how to implement the Salesforce solution, and that idea gives me a clear understanding of implementing all the CRMs. Um, I mean, we also know about Microsoft Dynamics and what it's doing when it comes into the CRM platform as well. So they are one of the biggest competitors for Salesforce itself. So if you have the knowledge of implementing a CRM as huge as Salesforce, imagine what you could do if you've never really built, had to work with a CRM like Microsoft Dynamics itself. So it gives That's you a broad understanding. So it's, it's, it allows you to really navigate the industry on different projects that you'd work on as a business analyst. Very nice. Do we have any last questions for Promise? Okay, Promise, thank you so much. Coming to us from the UK and, and staying up late to give us all of this good information. Look at all these thumbs up you're getting. Okay, we have, we will have this recorded. We're going to post it on YouTube. I'll send you a, a link to it so that you can have it as well, Promise. And I thank will- you. I expect to see all of y'all back. It will promise you don't have to come back next week, but David, I expect yeah. to see you back next yeah. week. Um, <laughs> whenever David's going to talk to us about authority for the business analyst, something that we have to learn how to develop, even if we're not given it easily. So I will see y'all. Uh, our thoughts and prayers go out to all of those who are struggling with the excess waters, winds, alligators, sharks, all the other things that go along with hurricanes in Florida. Uh, we want you to be safe. We want you to be safe more than anything else. 
I don't care what else gets destroyed. We want you to be safe. So check in with us, guys. Let us know how you're doing. And we hope to see you next week, if not by text before then. Okay. Thank you very much. Yeah. Talk to you Stay later. Safe, yeah. Thank you so much. Okay. Yeah. Take care, everyone. Bye. Bye. Thank you, Tia. Thank you, Promise. I appreciate you. Yeah. Bye. Bye.